Three Scary True Sleepover Stories, Volume 4, by Mr. Nightmare. What's good? How your day going? How your morning, your evening, your night? Whenever you're watching this video, you're not about to talk your ears off, about to jump right into this one, see what's going on at the sleepover. I already know, we just watched the sleepover story, but I don't care. Felt like watching this one, dog. That last one was pretty crazy. Hey, you want to check out the original video? The link will be in the description below, but let's go. Ages ago, when I was a boy, one of my favorite things to do would be to have sleepovers with my friends, especially my friend Joe. Joe had the coolest house layout. It was big and it had this huge basement with a pool table, air hockey table, and the entire basement looped around in a big circle. And we'd often ride his scooters around the loop in the basement while on our sugar rushes after hours of playing video games and eating junk food. The best part was his parents could never hear us down there as they slept all the way upstairs. I'll never forget the night that my mom dropped me off at Joe's house after dinner. It was a night before a holiday, so we didn't have school the next day. Joe and I went straight to the basement and started playing one of his new video games on his PlayStation 1, when suddenly the door to the laundry room in the back creaked open. We paused the game and turned around to look, and yes, the door was now cracked open. I told Joe to go check it out. He said it's fine, it happens sometimes. It's real health, Nick. To be honest though, sometimes at night alone in his basement, Joe and I would get spooked. I told him to go shut the door because something about having that door open leading into a big pitch black laundry room was uncomfortable. Agreed. I think he agreed because he got up to close it. After a while of playing video games, I started riding Joe's bike around the loop of the basement, which honestly was a lot more fun than it sounds. But then something else happened. There was a noise, almost like the sound of a laundry machine door being banged or closed. It came from the laundry room again, obviously. This time Joe and I ran up the stairs freaked out, and Joe called his dad to come check the laundry room. His dad opened the door to the laundry room, had a quick five second look, and calmly said there's no one in there. So he went back upstairs to bed, and Joe and I continued to hang out for another hour or two. Then it came time to go to sleep. There were two couches down there, one in front of the TV, and then another towards the back of the basement by the bar. I slept on the couch towards the back of the basement. I didn't sleep long though. I woke up and it was still pitch black in the basement, no light shining through the small basement windows. It was still the middle of the night. I rubbed my eyes and sat up after getting this weird feeling of being watched. Joe, I said, just checking if he was awake. After saying his name, I heard and saw something moving in the darkness to the laundry room. And then the door creaked shut. I jumped off the couch to wake up Joe, but when I got to his couch, he wasn't there. That's when I became wise to what was going on. Did he get Joe you? was trying to scare me. I tiptoed to the door of the laundry room. I figured I would reverse it on him and scare him instead. I put my hand on the doorknob. And after a little mental buildup, I yanked the door open and went inside screaming. <laughs> I turned on the light to the room, but Joe wasn't in there. Where could he be hiding? In that moment, I was beyond confused. I knew he had to be in the room. Then I noticed something through the glass of the dryer machine. I walked over to it and knelt down. Someone was in the dryer machine, crunched up and like a ball. You know how dryer machine doors usually have a sort of tinted glass that's hard to see through? Well, while I knew there was a person in there, it took me a few seconds to catch on that the person that was in the dryer machine looking back at me was not Joe. It was some grown man. Turn that bitch on, I started screaming and ran all the way upstairs to Joe's parents' room. Everyone in the house came out from their bedrooms in response, including Joe. Joe apparently was having a hard time falling asleep on the couch, so he went upstairs to his bedroom. <laughs> Joe, I yelled there was someone hiding in the dryer machine. As Joe's dad started his way storming to the basement, somebody ran through the living room and out the front door. Joe's mom let out a scream as his dad ran outside in his slippers to try to catch the man. Of course, being that he was only in slippers, he didn't have a chance. When he came back, Joe's mom had already called the cops. When the cops came, 
They asked me if there was anything specific that I could make out about the man. All I could say was that he was wearing dark clothes. Joe and I slept in his room. I slept on the floor with a blanket and we kept the door locked. We took a break from the sleepovers for a while after that. <laughs> Stop going over Joe crib. We suck because yeah, Joe has the fire crib, dog. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back when y'all get rid of them burglars, nigga. This happened quite some time ago. In fact, it happened back in July 2013. It was my 13th birthday party, and my friends and I had been to Manchester for the day, before heading back to my house for a sleepover. A couple of them had stayed over before, but some hadn't, so I wanted to make a good impression. We all decided to sleep downstairs that night, as there wasn't enough room in my bedroom. We gathered our sleeping bags on the living room floor, watched cheesy rom-coms, and ate junk food until around 1am. So we decided to hit the sack after our third movie. We turned off the lights with the exception of one, as although we didn't like to admit it then, we were a little afraid of the dark. It's a common thing to lie awake and chat at a sleepover after you say you're going to sleep. We were in the middle of whispering to each other who we thought our celebrity lookalikes were. When we heard it, a loud knock on our window cut through our conversation. What was that? said Emma, one of my friends. It's probably just my dad playing a prank or something, I said. Although this whole situation was kind of freaking me out, my dad had done this type of thing before, so I assumed it must have been him. We were beginning to calm down when suddenly, another forceful knock came upon the window. This made some of my friends scream. I assured everyone that, like I said, it was probably just my dad being goofy. <clears throat> so I went over to the window to catch him red-handed. The curtains were closed, so I had to pull a section of them back to see who was outside. As I did, I came face to face with a man who was most certainly not my dad. This man was bald with very thin eyebrows, and he had a missing tooth. He was sort of hunched over, and he looked at me with widened, glassy eyes. I immediately screamed and closed the curtain. At this point, my friends and I were pretty hysterical, and Emma began visibly shaking in fear. My parents were upstairs, so instinctively, I ran up to find them. As I got upstairs, my mom was talking to someone from her window. I didn't quite catch their conversation, but she told me what happened soon after. She said that she heard the knocking too, and when she looked out of her window to see who it was, the man looked up and asked her if she had seen a friend of his. You got no damn friend. I can't remember the name of the guy she said she was looking for, so we'll call him Paul. He kept asking for him over and over. Have you seen Paul? Where is Paul? Has Paul been here? Of course, my mom said she didn't know anyone named Paul. Eventually, she had to ask him to leave us alone, as he just kept wandering around our driveway. As the man finally left, I went it. back downstairs to calm my friends down. In retrospect, I feel bad for leaving them alone down there when some weird stranger was on our property. We all settled back down after that. However, my mom's maternal instincts kicked in, so she wanted to make sure he was gone completely. She left briefly to go around the block in her car to make sure he wasn't still in the area. <laughs> the street was dimly lit by impractical streetlights. Yeah, so well, I don't know, maybe just not telling dad side. I don't know, but <laughs> why would the mom go out still in the area? The street was dimly lit by impractical streetlights, so she had to put her high beams on. As she was driving, she saw someone dash across the middle of the road. Thinking it was just a kid, she just kept driving until the man who was at our window appeared again. But this time, he practically jumped in front of my mom's car. My mom quickly slammed on the brakes, but before she could confront him, he disappeared off into the night. We never found out who that guy was or what his true intentions were, and thankfully, we never saw him again. So much for wanting to make a good impression. My friend Jake slept over my house one night when we were 12, and because of that, he may have possibly saved my life. It was a snowy weekend night. We watched a couple Christmas movies in my living room. My mom would bring us snacks and hot cocoa. She was always really nice to my friends when I had them over. Mm. <laughs> my mom had to go to sleep kind of early because she worked. She and my dad had just recently divorced. 
By around 12, Jake and I went to my room, where we played Pokemon on our Game Boy Advances <laughs> for a little. I don't remember much after that, besides falling asleep. I love how these nights sound so similar to my nights as a kid, man. Man, my cousins used to do the same things in the basement, playing or freaking Pokemon, all this shit. And his mom was super nice. His mom used to treat us to shit like pizza rolls, snacks. Jake and I went to my room where we played Pokemon on our Game Boy Advances for a little. <laughs> I don't remember much after that besides falling asleep a little while later. I woke up in my bed to the room being extremely cold and also feeling really thirsty. I went to the kitchen downstairs to get a cup of water. I noticed how much colder it had become upstairs as opposed to downstairs. I went back to my bed and tucked myself in. As I lay there trying to fall back asleep, I realized Jake was breathing weird, like a deeper, heavier breathing. It went on for some time, and after making a note of it in my head, it was all I could focus on. So I eventually threw a pillow at him. I was thinking that. As he woke up, I told him to stop breathing so loud. He was confused as he looked up at me in my bed. He said, what are you talking about? I told him to just lower the volume of his breathing noises as he was borderline snoring. Jake shifted his focus from me to down below my bed, and then he screamed. Damn. He crawled backwards until his back was pushing up against my dresser. I yelled, what is it? I hopped off my bed and looked under it where he was staring at. There was a middle-aged man with long hair laying underneath my bed, and he had his finger up to his lips saying, Shh. It was a surreal sight to say the least. I felt like my heart was beating 200 beats per minute. The man whispered, I know your mom. I'm here to see her. He started crawling out from under the bed. At that dead? same moment, Jake and I ran from the room, screaming for my mom. We got to my mom's room and locked her bedroom door behind us. She was immediately distressed and confused by our screams. I barely had enough time to yell, there's a man under my bed, before the doorknob to my mom's room started twisting and shaking. Then the sounds of the doorknob failing to turn shifted to heavy, aggressive bangs at the door. My mom ran to her phone and called 911. She was on the phone already in tears, while also screaming at the man on the other side of the door to leave us alone. The man tried kicking the door in, but I think when he heard my mom on the phone, he left the house. We were all in shock. It took the police only a couple minutes to arrive, at which point the coast was clear. The biggest window in our house, which was the window to the upstairs spare bedroom, was lifted up completely, which explained the cool air entering the house upstairs. That also explained the man's point of entry. I told my mom that man claimed he knew her but she had no idea who this man could have been. My mom dropped Jake off home, and then she and I slept at my aunt and uncle's house for <laughs> yeah, the rest of the night. The, crib. the next day, my uncle installed a stronger lock on that upstairs window. This was like 16 years ago now. At this point, it's just a distant, haunting memory. But we never figured out who that man could have been, yeah, or how wild. he could have possibly known my mother. That one was trippy, dog. For real, for real. Man, these stories definitely had me pulled in. I'm not gonna lie, I was super focused because these ones were really relatable. It were so many nights I had like this as a kid where I hung out with my cousin on the weekends because he stayed on the nice side, in the nice side of Flint, whatever. So hanging out over there, we had access to almost any and everything we wanted to do. The whole plant, plant in the basement, all that Pokemon issue was like, damn, this is taking me back, dude. We even had a similar scary night. I kid you the freak not, where he left me downstairs. I even told you the story before where he left me downstairs and I woke up and that was the only night I had a trippy moment. I ain't gonna tell you all the story because I'm gonna wrap this video up right now. But either way it go, man. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click the like button for me. I highly appreciate it, doggy bone. But I'm out.